BYU, Southern Illinois, the season opener for the BYU Cougars is just days away. It is time to catch up with Connor Pay, our first of what are our regular season visits here on the podcast. What does he know about Southern Illinois? What is he most excited about playing under the lights at Lavelle Edwards Stadium once again? We're talking about all that and more ahead on today's show. You are Locked On Cougars, your daily podcast on the BYU Cougars. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everybody? I'm Jake Hatch, your host here on Locked On Cougars, resident BYU insider. Thank you for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. Appreciate all of you who we like to call everydayers right here on your original daily podcast focused on the BYU Cougars. Today's show is brought to you by our friends over at Game Time. Download the Game Time app today. Create an account and use the promo code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Download Game Time app again today. What time is it? It's our friends over at Game Time. All right, time to welcome in team captain, new team captain for the I feel like the umpteenth time. Uh, Connor Pay back with us here on the podcast, and we'll start there, Connor. Uh, how validating was it to see yourself be voted as one of four team captains for BYU once again this season? You know, it's it's pretty awesome, uh, to be honest with you, because that's the that's the it's the one award or accolade or something. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. It's not really a, uh, an award, but it's the one title that's voted on by you know your peers mm-hmm. and the people who are closest to you, the people who uh, grind with you all off season long and all. And so, you know, that's it's one of the it, it comes from a group whose opinion I I value a lot you know and so to to have my my family my brothers you know vote for me as someone that they want to lead the team throughout the season is such a special thing you know and when we don't take it lightly that's for sure because it really is it, it really is a pretty cool thing well, and it's a fairly veteran group. Uh, you and Tyler Batty are multiple multiple times. They've been captains. Jacob Robinson gets the honor as well as Chase Roberts. I think that's about as uh, good a group of. And I know it's, and there's going to be rotating co captains. I think there's 15 other guys who are going to rotate uh, through with you guys. But to see that crew of guys uh, kind of lead this program forward, I think it, it speaks to who the true leaders are of this program, which you are a part of. Yeah, no, I, I think that's definitely the case, and you know, and we're it's a, I mean, it is, it really is an honor to you know to you know to be given that that Tyler to have been voted to to be someone who sits in that seat and can kind of represent the team, you know, with uh, with with other leaders in the school and the coaching staff, et cetera, all all that other stuff. So. Now, obviously, it is game week. You guys are in full preparation mode for Southern Illinois and looking forward to that, obviously, coming up this weekend. Uh, what is your feeling? Like, does it feel like, hey, finally, we, we, we made it? <laughs> yes, definitely. Definitely feels that way. At least, at least it does for me, I guess. I've been through this a few times, you know, and so it's just I'm sick of practicing. I'm ready to play the games, you know, and it's – uh you know, it's finally here, you know, time really does fly. Like, cause at the same time, it's like, Oh, finally it's here. But also it's like, man, the season's here already. Um, feels like just yesterday we were getting, you know, we were starting our winter workouts in January, you know? And so, uh, so now just to kind of all the, all the hard work and all the things you've done throughout the off season to improve and try to get better, especially with us and our position group, you know, this is the first time we get to go out there and put that on display. So, is there an extra hunger you feel like? Because you guys miss out on a bowl game, so you guys have been not playing games since the end of last November. So it's it's been a long haul for you guys with workouts, as you mentioned, and just off season uh, talking points and meetings and all that stuff. Does it feel like there's an extra hunger with this squad about getting back after it and chasing uh, down a better season than a year ago? For sure, for sure. Because I think. Uh... I don't think there's a single person who's not, you know, a little bit embarrassed about how last season went. We've talked about that before. Um, but I think just <clears throat> with that comes a, you know, as competitors, you have a desire to improve, right? And you want to, you want to win and you want to do well for the fans and the people who support you. Um, and so I think that definitely brings 
a different urgency and a different intensity, which I feel like we've had since winter workouts started in January, and we'll have to continue that throughout the season. What? How has it manifest itself? Does that make sense? Like, how how has that manifest itself? And you guys, uh, you talk about workouts. How has it manifested itself on the field? Like, what have you seen that's different from this team? Um, I think it manifests itself in a lot of ways. I think this this group is really disciplined. Um, and you know, a lot of that stems from you know having a new and you know complete strength staff. Uh, you know, to kind of help, help guide some of that, that discipline. And, um, you know, I think, uh, I think there's a, there's a, I guess I'm trying to figure out how to describe this the right way. There's a, there's a, a quiet confidence, you know, and then there's, there's a, there's a humility with this team that comes with the understanding that we underperformed and we have to work that much harder to rectify it and to get better and to have a good season. And so, and, and we've talked about this at the O-line room specifically, you know, it's how it's my last year, you know, so I was, I was, uh, you know, pushing the guys pretty hard in the off season and there was no pushback from that. Whereas sometimes there had been in years past and where it was like, everybody was like, Nope, this is, we got to do this. You know, we got, we got to get better. This is, this is what we have to do in order to put ourselves in that position. And so I think just that attitude, that that willingness to to do extra, to do more, um, you know, is is kind of become a part of the culture of this year's team, which is which I think is a pretty special thing. Now you, you mentioned pushback there. There was a quote that Reiner Swanson said on my radio show, and I need to get your thought on it because I think it points directly to what you're talking about with happened with what happened a season ago that may have contributed to some of the failures of a season ago. And we'll dig into that as you roll on momentarily right here on Locked On Cougars. Today's show is brought to you by our friends over at Game Time. Now, Game Time is here for you guys no matter what type of events you want to go to. Sports, music, comedy, theater. No matter what you're into, Game Time has got the options for you guys. They have a brand new feature in their app called Game Time Picks. It makes getting your tickets to your favorite live events even easier. It filters out all the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets to find the right option for you guys. The best part about it is no matter what you're looking for, they've got options for you. Curated deals make it easier to find the best uh, price on your ticket seats. They have a super deal, what they call every single day. It feels like seat views before you buy. And of course, the lowest price guarantee, event cancellation protection, and job loss protection as well. It's all part of what Game Time offers to you, the fan. The best part is you can download the Game Time app today and take the guesswork out of buying your, your tickets with our friends at Game Time once again. While you're there, create that account on the Game Time app. Use the promo code Locked On College and get $20 off your first purchase. Once again, terms apply. Create that account redeem the promo code l-o-c-k-e-d-o-n-c-o-l-l-e-g-e that's locked on college for twenty dollars off your off uh for, for your first uh purchase from game time download game time today what time is it game time Today's show is also brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel. Now, FanDuel is here for you guys, no matter what you're into. But the best part is we've talked a lot about FanDuel. They got a really unique offer, though. A lot of you out there are football fans. And it obviously extends to college football on this podcast. But if you're an NFL fan as well, we got an incredible offer for you guys. Right now, through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then with the YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out-of-market game and catch up with any team you want to track or your team that you want to track yourself. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment, and you can cancel at any time, no problem at all. Just visit, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to download America's number one sports and get started today. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started today with our friends over at FanDuel. Thank you once again for being Locked On Cougars, your first listen of the day. I want to remind you guys, if you've not done so already, check out Locked On College Football. We've got these season previews covering the ACC, the Big Ten, the SEC, and obviously the Big 12, which BYU is a part of. It was a chance to be a part of that uh, podcast. If you want to get all the intel ahead of the real start of the season, we had week zero a week ago, four games, but a full slate of games this coming weekend. Get caught up right now with Locked On College Football. It's available wherever you get your podcasts, also on YouTube. And of course, it is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. 
All right, continuing on now with Connor Pay, BYU team captain. And Connor, Reiner Swanson, he was not a member of the team a season ago, but he spoke with DJ and PK not too long ago and had a very inter interesting quote. Now, it had a, both a positive and a negative part to it. So the first part he said, and that was a great thing, is you know Reiner as well as anybody, Connor, because he plays tight end. He's right there with you guys in the offensive line meetings. It feels like half the time. He said, we're not freaking messing around. That was the first part of his quote. But then he said, after that, he said, last season I heard that some guys were showing up late to meetings last year, and that may have contributed to some of the struggles they had a season ago. And then he added, we're not dealing with that anymore. We're, we're not freaking messing around is what he re reiterated. You talked about some pushback you got a season ago from the offensive line room. Is, is what Reiner is talk is what Reiner referring to what you were talking about as well as that lineup? Yeah, yeah, I think there was, I think there was, um, I think it was a mix of a few things. Um, but no, that was that was definitely part of it. Just lack of discipline as a team, guys being late to things, missing lifts, missing meetings, um, you know, and then uh, and then unfortunately not. Not uh, not being enabled to hold them accountable the way that you need to to have a successful organization, um, and that and that happened in multiple position groups. To be honest with you, and uh, you know, so I think there's definitely some truth to that. You know, and I think uh, just being on the team now, Reiner's Reiner's heard some of the stories from last year, I'm sure, and um, yeah, we that's not something we've had to deal with this year. It's just. It's it's not a part of the culture of this team, you know, and it's uh, and I think the accountability of this team and and what we've been enabled to do as leaders to hold people accountable. But to be honest with you, we haven't had to do a ton of it. Okay. You know, there there hasn't had to be a ton of uh, you know ripping people or or punishing people for things and stuff like that because this team this team is pretty bought in um, and. You know, that's uh, makes our lives a lot easier, honestly, as captains and as leaders and and makes me optimistic for for the outlook of the season. Well, it's good to hear. I, I The term I meant to use is like slippage, and that, that seems to be have been the case. But it's, it's good to hear that that's rectified. And how have you when you have had to correct guys, you, you you've talked about this on the podcast all offseason long, the work you've done with this offensive line, demanding accountability from them. Is it just been essentially encouraging guys? Hey, you know what slipped last year. Let's not let that happen. Has that kind of been the message to everybody in the program? Yeah, and I think it's I think it's one of our responsibilities as leaders to know our uh, you know to know our teammates well enough to know how to approach them in those situations. Because there's some guys on the team I can go right up to directly in the moment in front of people. Doesn't matter. And basically lay into them and be like, you know, that's not what we do here. Like, do things the right way, and they'll be totally cool with that. Okay. There are other guys where if I tried to do that, it would it would fracture our relationship, right? And that's and there are other times where it's like, okay, and just be like, okay, man, like you know, you know the standard. Let's do it, and not, um, you know, you always have you have to at attack the problem, not the person. Mm -hmm. I think uh, I think that's that's a big thing. Um, as I've matured as a leader and as the, the strength staff actually put all of the leaders through a leadership seminar course this off season, um, which was, which was really helpful. Um, and you know, you always want to, you always want to address the good and the bad, right? So always praising people for doing things well, but also addressing the things they don't do well. Um, and I think that's one thing we've also gotten much better at is it used to just be constantly, you know, Earlier on, it would just be, especially last year, just, you know, me and Tyler or other guys who are more vocal, just yelling at people all the time, doing things, just always addressing the negative. But we weren't we weren't very good at reinforcing the positive. We were, we were always focusing. And maybe it's because we were, we were losing games and things weren't going well. I had my own issues in my own position room and all that stuff. And um but I think we've matured a lot as leaders in that sense, and to where to where the the off season captains and those guys, you know, we didn't we didn't have to be in that situation as much, and it was a lot more of just reinforcing all the good things guys were doing, you know. To where now, if someone does screw up or does slip up, I can go to them and be like, "Come on, bro, I've watched you. I know what you can do. I've watched you do this fifteen times before. Like, right, come on, let's lock in. I know what you're capable of." 
and and it can be, it can be much more of an empowering moment versus a moment where you have to tear somebody down. Um, and so I think uh, I think we've had a lot of those moments this off season with a lot of of different leaders and a lot of different players, guys who, you know, took major steps forward because a leader addressed them the right way, and in a way that was personal to them. Well, and. Kalani's talked about this one, him, him wanting this to be a player run program. And that speaks, I think, directly to what he wants from you guys. He wants you guys peer to peer rather than coach to athlete to go and correct the issue before a coach has to step in. And obviously there are times in your room that TJ Woods is going to step in and every other position group's got their coach that will step in if need be. But ideally, I think they like the fact that say you at the offensive line, if there's a guy who screws up, you can point to him directly and say, Hey, you know what you did wrong. Let's get it fixed here. I know how well you can play. And I think that actually has a more, and I don't claim to be a psychologist in any way, shape, or form, but what I understand of the human psyche is that's going to reinforce positive behavior rather than having to harp on that negative behavior. Exactly. Exactly. Now, uh, with regards to this upcoming game, season opener, Southern Illinois, I know it's an FCS game, but this is an FCS team that's unlike many you guys have probably played in your time there. They're ranked 11th in the preseason poll. They were seemingly a play away, it felt like, a season ago from going into the semifinals of the FCS playoffs. Got a very strong defensive reputation. What do you know about the Salukis? What can you let our fans know about them? I mean... Individually, in terms of individual players, I don't know a ton because they were they had a lot of changes on defense with transfer portal and stuff like that. I think they don't, they only have three returning starters on defense, um, and so from an individual perspective, knowledge is a little limited. But in terms of what their defense does and what they do, you know, they're really variable on defense, um, and you know they run they run multiple different fronts. You know, a lot of different type of pressures that they can bring, especially when they're running, you know, that, that three, three stack defense, you know, that's a lot of, it's a lot of different areas. You can bring a lot of different people. Um, and, you know, I think uh, they, they move and slant and do a lot of that stuff a lot, which can, can make things a little difficult, you know, on an offensive line. Um, but really looking forward to the challenge with them. Cause yeah, they've, they've played up to some, in some big games the last couple of years. Um, and you know, we know that they're going to be up and excited to play us here. So, um, really looking forward to playing them, uh, and getting a chance to, uh, you know, get, get our season going and, and prove, you know, or I guess not prove, but rather show the improvements that we've made this off season, but no, definitely a high quality opponent. I have a lot of respect for how hard they play on defense. Um, and you know, for what they're able to accomplish with, you know, seemingly less talented players. Right. And, uh, uh, they, they, they've had great defenses for years now, years. And so with all the movement, all the variability, it makes for like some, some dirty runs. I think I may have mentioned that earlier in the presser this morning, but you know, that's, that's kind of to be expected with a defense like that when they move that much, you know, just, there's going to be some dirty runs. They're going to get us sometimes. It's going to be a one or two yard gain, right? And then, but I, I think we're going to be able to catch them outside of the gap sometimes, and hopefully be able to move the line of scrimmage and you know and, and pop a few. Has it been talked about how their head coach Nick Hill? He is three and five as a head coach against FBS teams. They've beat uh, Northwestern a couple seasons ago. They beat Northern Illinois last year. They've they've beat some teams at your level before. Is that is that been talked about in the program? Um, not necessarily like his specific record. Okay. Like that, that was the first time you saying that was the first time I'd heard about his specific record, but obviously just from watching the tape, you know, from the last couple of seasons, you know, I, I watched that Northwestern game. I watched, uh, that game against uh, NIU. And so it's, uh, you know, we're, we're well aware of what they're able to accomplish. Um, and so definitely, definitely not a game that you can overlook these guys. Uh, and they're they're a really quality opponent to uh, to uh, start the year off with. And it's like, man, sometimes I just wish we could just be like the SEC or something, and we can just schedule three cupcakes in a row. Where it's like, 
man, we uh, yeah, we, did we go down to FCS? Yeah, but we got one of the best FCS teams we could find. And then, you know, it's uh, – then you got to go play the ACC, then go to Laramie. Like, mm-hmm. what are we doing, Tom? But, um, <laughs> like, it's uh, – but no, I'm re- I'm I'm pretty excited to play them, and I've a just from watching them, you know, obviously I have a, I have a lot of respect for them on defense, and excited to play against them. Well, that's awesome to hear. Uh, one, uh, which one, real quick thought. We're gonna get to our listener questions momentarily, but you guys, you guys feel like you learned a lesson last year from Sam Houston State. I know that Sam Houston was technically an FBS team, but they were moving up from the FCS ranks, and they were your season opener a year ago, and. Uh, quite frankly, you guys struggled, and that kind of, I think, uh, told us a lot about that team. Do you feel like you guys learned from last year's struggles in the opener? For sure, for sure. And I think, uh, you know, ironically, like Sam Houston did a lot of – they they based out of some different fronts, but they moved a lot, kind of like Southern Illinois does and some things like that. And I don't think we – I don't think we were as prepared for that as we are this year. Um, and, uh, you know, I think uh, – <clears throat> well, I don't, I don't think – so it's it's always hard to see whether or not a first game is going to be an indication of a team's success that season or not, because there's there's always those teams that uh, you know maybe struggle in the first game and that first game maybe reveals some problems they didn't know were there, and they address them, and they move on and they play great the rest of the year, um, and then there's teams where it exposes some issues and they never get it fixed. Um, you know, which is kind of more the category we fell into last year. And so, um, you know, it's kind of hard to judge like what that first game performance is is going to be like. But uh, no, I definitely think I definitely think there's a lot of lessons from the Sam Houston game that have been carried over and, and, and talked about and uh, hopefully can be used as, you know, as something to help us prepare a little better for this first game. All right, we will finish up this edition of the podcast as we always do with listener questions for Connor. We'll get to that momentarily right here on Locked on Cougars. Today's show is brought to you by our friends over at 5-Hour Energy. Now, if you're uh, in the need of an extra boost of energy, well, 5-Hour Energy might be the option for you guys. The best part about it is with 5-Hour Energy, they've got the options for you guys in terms of the flavors you're looking for. Uh, Whether you like strawberry, pineapple, it doesn't matter what flavor it is. They've got a flavor for you. The best part is uh, you can use it before your workout, like Connor talked about with the workouts the BYU football has gone through. If you want to get in shape and have trouble staying motivated, make 5-Hour Energy shots shots part of your lifestyle and get the energy boost you need to get fit we all know sometimes you do not want to go to the gym take a five-hour energy shot to give you that extra boost and alertness so you can get over to the gym and get that workout in the best part is it also gives you that alertness and energy you need to get in the zone and stay in the zone for however long you need to the best part is you can get started today with our friends over at five hour energy and uh, it's a brand hard-working company like you have trusted for over 20 years to give them the alert energized feeling they need to get through a busy hectic day. You always know ex- exactly where to find five-hour five hour energy shots right at the cash register at nearly every convenience, drug, and grocery store nationwide. The best part is you can stock up on money-saving multi-packs to make sure you have never run out of delicious, energizing five-hour energy shots. And also, go to fivehourenergy.com right now. That is the number five, hourenergy.com, and get some five-hour energy product today. You can use the promo code locked on CFB and get 20% off your order. The offer is only valid until September 30th on one order, and that cannot be used with other promotions. The code is not good on subscription orders either. So once again, go to 5hourenergy.com today and use the promo code locked on CFB and save yourself 20% at with our friends over at 5 Hour Energy. Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. If you have not done so already, sign up for our Locked On Cougars Insider Group. It's a way to have an opportunity to ask Connor questions. We've also got season tickets uh, that we purchased uh, for the podcast to give away to our Locked On Cougars Insider uh, groups. So if you want to get out to a BYU game and watch Connor and his teammates play at Lavelle Edwards Stadium this fall, sign up today. Links in the show notes below, whether you're watching and or listening to this. It's a 14-day free trial uh, to see if it's the right option for you right out the chute. All right, Connor, uh, let's go uh, pretty quick here because I got a lot of questions that came in. We're not going to be able to get to all of them, but we'll get through as many as we can here. Uh, First honors goes to Laramie here, and he's got a great question for you on Saturday, Connor. What is the over-under on rushing yards that you believe you guys can run for against Southern Illinois? (laughs) Um... That's a great question. I don't know. I don't know. I'd say, I think I've been I've been I've been playing this game long enough to know that it's pretty much impossible to put a number okay. to something like that. But uh, 
Um, you know, obvious, obviously you want to be in the hundreds, of course, of course, you know, definitely don't want, definitely don't want double digits. You want to be like Montana state against Bronco Mendenhall, New Mexico and run for like 400, right? That's, that's the dream. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. They, they made it, they, they left miserable for New Mexico on Saturday. That's all I'm going to say. That was the first FCS over FBS upset of the season, by the way. Um, Matt Moon's got a good one here for you. I'm going to watch. Yeah. Uh, what is Connor going to say to the opposing to the first opposing player? He gets his first pancake on of the season. What's the message to him? I can't. I can't repeat that on the podcast. <laughs> it's a family show. We understand. Um, I, I, mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I mean my go to is just to laugh at him. I don't even say anything. I'll just look at him and I'll laugh. Okay, I feel so like that's almost more humiliating than uh, than anything I could say to them. You know, because you were just you were just pile driving into the ground by somebody else, and you look up and they're just laughing at you. Well, you and, and I have I've had that done done to me before, and I hated it, and so kind of picked it up. Yeah, sure. You and I uh, obviously share a connection to Eli Herring, the former BYU offensive lineman. And uh, when I played for him in high school, his whole thing was, yes, he liked to laugh at guys at times. But the best part was, Connor, he was a guy who said, you walk over, help him up and say, hey, let's go do it again. There's nothing more insulting than telling them, hey, we're going to get we're going to do it all over again here. <laughs> exactly. So there you go. All right. Uh, next one here from John Connor. The season starts this weekend, obviously, as if you didn't know on a scale of one to 10, how prepared is this team in your mind? Let's see. It's Monday. I'd say we're at about a six right now. Okay. You know, so I think, uh, but I think that's right about where you want to be on a Monday. Um, and so as we progress further through the game plan, get a little deeper, We'll get we'll get that up to get that up to a ten by uh, around six p.m. on Saturday night. Uh, next one from Christopher. How tired is this team, specifically the offensive line, of hearing they won't be very good and they'll be lucky to win six games this year? <laughs> yeah, pretty tired of it. Pretty tired of it, you know. But but at the end of the day, there's nothing we can do to stop it except for go out there and play really well and win. That's all we can do to to. Uh, to stop that from happening. So it's on us at the end of the day. All right. Josh asked this, is Connor happy with his personal progress this fall camp? And then also can you uh, ask him about the offensive lines progress as a whole? Yeah, I am. And it's, uh, it's been great. You know, coach Woods is on me every single day, you know, for the nitty, the nitty gritty details. You know, even even to the point where I get annoyed with them or frustrated sometimes, um, where it's just like, man, dude, I thought that was a pretty good play, and you're up here ripping me for like my foot was off by like an inch or missed my hand placement like this. But then I just have to remember, like, that's why I was excited he was coming here in the first place. Mm -hmm. You know, because that's that's the kind of stuff that's going to make you the best player that you can be. And so, I'm I'm pretty excited about you know the progress I've made and trying to you know, implement and do what he wants me to do so I can fit wealth in his system. And um, and I think the whole group has done a really solid job of that, you know. And uh, I feel like we have steadily progressed over the course of training camp. Um, and the culture of the room is changing. And, uh, you know, I think it's, uh, it's definitely moving in the right direction. Ken asked this, and it relates to that answer you just gave, Connor. Uh, since Connor likes to call it how it is, I would like to know if he truly believes this offensive line is going to be really dominant or just better than last year. Um, I think, I well, I think we'll for sure be better. I think the the dominance aspect will come to how how well we can stay attached to the details all season long. You know, and and how well we're able to, even if there's some great success or some adversity, how well we can stay attached to the details. Because at least for offensive line play, that's the key. Once you start losing sight of those little things, you start to lose your edge a little bit, and you're not as dominant as a player. So, I think uh, how well we're able to do that and keep that focus um, will determine that a lot. Adrian asked this, how will Connor measure this season as success for himself and also for the team? I mean, I think there's a ton of different ways you can. 
measure it. And uh, I think the most obvious one is wins, <laughs> right? And I think that's uh, that's everybody's goal. That's what everybody wants to do. But you know, I think you have to you you can't you can't only be focused on the results. You have to fall in love with the process too, and that's how you produce the best results. You know, the people who love the process the most are generally the people who produce the best results. And so, um, I, a successful year in my mind would just be, um, you know, if we can handle the process of a Big Twelve season better than we did last year. You know, where it's like there's going to be some ups and there's definitely going to be some downs in adversity. How can we handle the adversity when it inevitably comes Mm -hmm. better this year than we did last year? You know, I think uh, um, I think that'll be, you know, a big way that I measure, at least individually, uh, not only as a player, but as a captain and other things like I think that'll be one way that I measure the success of our team and for us as leaders. All right, good friend Zach from Vandy Creations down there in St. George makes all those incredible uh, lanyards and everything you guys have had. He's got two- yeah, I know Zach. He's got a two-parter here for you, Connor. First one: the over/under on on unsportsmanlike or personal foul penalties in this game this week, just because guys are stoked to hit somebody new. Oh man, well, <laughs> I was just talking about how disciplined we've been this off season. So I'm hoping that it's zero. Yes, I'm hoping that. Uh, you know, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that it's zero, and I'm hoping we can get everything done in between the whistles. Because if you do a great job in between the whistles, you don't need all those theatrics after the whistle. Okay. Um, but at the same time, I'd much rather get a couple unnecessary roughness penalties and have to pull people back than have to try to fire them up because they're playing like they don't even care. You know, I'd much rather have people be over aggressive than not aggressive enough. Part two, what is the away atmosphere besides Rice Eccles and Utah he's most excited to experience this season? Um, we got a good list this year. Um, I mean, I'm, I've always, I'm just probably because of my dad, I've always heard the stories about Laramie um, and how crazy it is up there. I think, uh, you know, some of the old stories is like you got grandmas screaming at you, flipping you off as you're coming out of the tunnel. They had beer poured on them. You know, my dad said that one guy whipped his dong out and was peeing on him over the railing like as they were coming out of the tunnel. Yes. And so it's like you hear all those crazy stories. And so it's like I'm pretty excited to go experience a game in Laramie for myself. Uh, I can tell you my dad is, has seen the the peeing over the railing with his own eyes. So, yeah, that that absolutely has happened up there in Laramie. There's no doubt about that. Um, then he also- <laughs> He did. Zag added this one part, and after and see after the season, you both need to come to St. George and golf with me. So that's just a, an added tidbit for for later on, Connor. <laughs> Absolutely need to get that done. All right, um, I got two more for you. We'll get in here. I think we're gonna got two. I'm sure. sure. Uh, Marlon asked this: What is Connor's game day ritual slash superstition? Ooh, <clears throat> well, I used to have one. Um. I used to always play catch with students in the rock before the game. There used to just always be something that I did, or I'd play catch with somebody, okay. right? Someone on the team or something. But I guess, and I'm being 100% honest right now, I had no idea this happened in the moment. But apparently, I, I would start getting some, I was throwing the ball up pretty high. I guess there was a game last year where I, I had thrown the ball up and I typically like look away because like, I don't know where it's going to land. I'm chatting it up with my teammates or something. And I threw it up there, looked away. I think I was chatting with Ammon, Hanneman or somebody. And uh, I guess it hit somebody Uh-oh. in the head, you know, and, and, uh, and I think it gave her a concussion. And so they they brought her down, and I, I kept trying to find her so I could apologize and get her some free gear or something. And I was I wasn't able to do that. So if if she somehow finds this podcast and listen to it, like please hit me up on social media or DM me or something, and I'll try to make it up to you, get you some free gear or something because I felt bad about it. <laughs> but uh, then we got a message. We got a message uh, out to the team. Um, when I just checked my phone, when I went in there to go change, it's like, Hey, 
uh, we're not we're not going to play catch with fans anymore before the game. And I was like, oh no, crap. So you so said, how was uh Mal Williams kind of started? I know the other guys have done it, but John Mal Williams is famous for it. And you decided you had to go. Yes, and yes. Okay, got it. Okay, so I screwed it up, and I feel terrible about it. But okay. I might still do it this year, just because I mean, it's not a, uh, it's not exactly unknown that I tend to not follow instructions. <laughs> but um, I might do it, but I might keep it just on like the first couple rows, nice soft throws, not throwing anything hard, just to sell my buddies in the rock that I have classes with or something that I know. Maybe I'll just do that. We'll see. Okay. We'll see. All Hopefully right. Tom didn't hear that. But. <laughs> yes. Uh, final word will go to our good friend Jake Cass. He says this, with the 17 or whatever Traegers that are going every day down there at BYU, what is Connor's go-to meet when he gets a chance to eat at the facility? At the facility specifically? Yeah. The, so with the, you don't have the Traegers. They're cooking up all the – I know they got ribeyes and all that yeah. stuff. What's the go-to? Um, I love Dan's smoked chicken breast. Okay. There's one. There's one. He does a certain seasoning on one. I don't know what it is. It's almost got like an orangish color to it. Okay. Um, and that one is very good. That's whenever that one's in the fridge, I always hurry and grab it because it's a it's a favorite. So they go quick. Um, I'm not. I wish I knew. I wish I knew what seasoning it was so I could give a better explanation. But, um, yeah, that's definitely the one. It's my favorite. We'll have to do some research and ask Dan what what is what his secret season name is. And yes, out. we do. All right. Well, Connor, uh, that'll do it for this week. Mm-hmm. Obviously, best of luck this week against Southern Illinois. We will reconvene. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll react to whatever happened uh, against the Salukis and then look forward to the SMU Mustangs. Absolutely. All right. That's Connor. I'm Jake. Big thank you to all of you for tuning in and making it your first listen of the day. I always appreciate you guys being a part of the program. Uh, Once again, thank you for making your first listen of the day. And as always, thank you for being everydayers with us right here on the Locked on Cougars podcast.